Hi guys, it's Wallace Jovatich, contributing editor with Book Riot. I'm back again for Monday videos. I want to thank Swapna Krishna for taking over for me while I was on maternity leave. Since I've seen you, I have had a baby, a son. His name is Smith, and if any of you follow me on Instagram, then you have seen loads of pictures of him. <laughs> Not as much reading happening these days, but lots of baby stuff. However, Lots of reading about baby stuff. So I should say there has been a lot of reading, just not a lot of reading that I would normally have done. However, getting back on that track now, using my phone a lot actually, to be perfectly honest, I use the apps in my phone for reading a ton because it fits perfectly in one hand and it makes it a lot easier. Also audiobooks. But there are posts on Book Riot about reading when you have kids and I will do a video of all about that as well and direct you towards those posts in case you're curious about them. But today I'm actually going to come back with two books about birth control. Um, it's in the news, it's in politics lately. I'm not taking a side, I'm not talking about it on this uh, video about the actual issue that's going on in the news, but I am going to give you some reading to do that might be interesting to you if you are interested in this topic um, because of the news or just in general. Sweetening the Pill by Holly Griggs Spall um, came out several years ago. I don't know if any of you have seen the movies that Ricky Lake did with her producing partner um, about birth uh, and uh, natural birth, but they are going to be making a video or a documentary, I guess, about this. This book is what I've heard, what the rumor is. Um, this is all about... <sighs> It's a, it's a nonfiction book about how women, um, how, how the pill affects our bodies and basically about, you know, asking the question, is it fair to put all of the responsibility on females? Is it fair to ask them to put something that is not natural in their body every single day um, in order to not get pregnant? And um, is it? And, and why we were tr why we even have our periods when that happens is then um, it kind of tricks us into feeling like we're women apparently if we get our periods but there's a lot more than that and this goes way more extended in the book but it's very very interesting and whether you think one way or the other it's definitely food for thought so re reading this will give you some insight and you'll either want to throw the book across the room or you'll be nodding your head in agreement and maybe it'll be chapter to chapter of how you're feeling about it but definitely questions to be raised about um you know why why so much of birth control relies on women now in 2015 uh, why isn't it not more of an equal opportunity um especially because there are pills that have been made for men that they have not been able to market to them and it, she goes into that more in this as well. So interesting topic. On the other hand of that is The Birth of the Pill by Jonathan Eag and um, I hope I said his last name right. This is about the birth of the pill <laughs> about starting in the 1930s with the scientist that worked on it and his experience working on in vitro um, and then you know, all the way out to the 60s where it was the sexual revolution where women were able to actually use the pill. So, you know, contrary to what the first book was talking about, this book is saying that then you have the option to use the pill. So even if it is your responsibility and the reason the responsibility is with the woman is because she's the one who gets pregnant, we have the ability now to not get pregnant and how that changed the world because really it really did to be able to not get pregnant as a woman and have women be able to give um, meaningful contributions to society besides just children completely revolutionized the way that the world and our country in particular did things and does things so this is also very fascinating other side of this uh, argument I don't know if it's really an argument both books both books are very much about women being, being both books are very much about women being able to control their procreation. So even sweetening the pill um, does not say women should just have babies and that's it. It just gives different alternatives to taking the pill because the pill is not a natural thing for your body to be doing every single day. Um, and then this is talking a lot about how but the pill revolutionized our, our world. So aren't we glad we have it? Anyway, reading both of them will give you good information on the spectrum of birth control, um, women's rights, and the sexual revolution, and um, the importance of women's health and ability to make choices. Sweetening the Pill is definitely a backlister. 
the birth of the pill came out last year around this time so I'm not 100% positive that it is a backlister but it will be shortly if it's not already and you can definitely find it in your library because it has been out for almost a year. If you have any other books that pertain to this topic that you have loved you can put them in the comments below for other readers to be able to find and read and I hope you guys have a great week. Happy reading and I will see you again here next Monday. Bye.